Hey, good afternoon, grade eight U.S. history learners for Mr. Drake's U.S. history class. Welcome um, to our first screencast in our eighth grade distance learning program. Uh, thanks for tuning in to our uh, screencast today. And the screencast, you guys, um, is part two of a two-part lesson. Part one is the screencast and part two is the activity. So each week we'll be given a topic and um, you can watch the screen past and you can complete the activity that if you want to visit our zoom classes we can um, answer any questions clarify any content um, and provide any sort of insight into our topic each week so um, i hope everyone's doing well and i hope your families are well in this challenging time um, i know this isn't ideal the distance learning program however um, I'm really excited uh, to be able to reach out with you guys and continue our classes and provide some stability and structure uh, to your day and along with Ms. Gallego, Mr. Bartleson, Mr. Cortez, hopefully um, we're getting a program together that keeps you guys engaged and we keep the learning curve going up for you. Um, yeah, so um, let's go ahead and move on. So thanks for completing the week one lesson activity. Uh, last week's lesson activity was titled American West Introduction um, to our unit. And what it did was it introduced you to this whole idea that the United States was a growing nation in the early 1800s. And bit by bit, Americans began to want to push West across the continent. And, um, and why did they do that? They did that in an attempt to get more land, get more economic opportunity, have more land to farm, um, and essentially grow the nation. Okay, there are a lot of immigrants coming from Europe and the original 13 colonies in addition to the Northwest Territory, which had expanded after the Constitution was written, um, there was a big desire to push West. However, the problem, as you know from the reading last week, was that um, the West, uh, you know, was, was already taken. The French owned the entire Mississippi River corridor, uh, which is our which uh, is our topic that we'll look at today, and the Spanish. Uh, remember, Christopher Columbus came in uh, 1492, and he and they built the Spanish Empire, uh, headquartered in Mexico City. Well, the Spanish had pushed their empire out of the Valley of Mexico all the way up the west coast of what is today the United States. So, if you looked west in 1300, or excuse me, in 1800, you'd see the French and the Spanish. Um, claimed land that would later become the American West. And also, it shouldn't be forgotten, that's really important, is the Native American Indians, the original inhabitants of this land that had been around on the land for uh, you know up to 9,000 years since the first uh, human um, indigenous Native Americans began arriving um, nearly 10,000 years ago. So uh, let's move on. Um, by the way, if you didn't do the introduction to our West activity last week, you can find the weekly activities in um, our course weekly uh, lesson folders on Schoology. Okay, so let's begin to look at our week two unit topic, which is the American West part uh, second installment, and this is the Louisiana Purchase, uh, known as the greatest land deal ever. Okay, so what are we looking at? We're looking at a purchase of land called Louisiana. Um, and, you know, history has, uh, has labeled it the greatest land deal ever. It was certainly the greatest land deal ever uh, executed by the United States. Now, um, as far as I know, there's been no other land purchase um, throughout, uh, throughout world history that, that is equal to the purchase of the Louisiana Territory in 1803. There has been land that has been acquired by nations through war and through other means, but, but an outright uh, buying and selling of a chunk of land, the Louisiana Purchase is probably the biggest. Okay, moving on. So let's begin our, uh, our, our look at the topic. The first um, character that's involved in this uh, greatest land deal ever called the Louisiana Purchase is a gentleman named Thomas Jefferson. Now, you remember Thomas Jefferson as um, number one, uh, the architect of the Declaration of Independence, which gave birth to, um, you know, which, which laid out the values for the creation of the United States of America. Thomas Jefferson is also known for uh, being instrumental 
in the writing of the Constitution. He was afraid that the Constitution would give the federal government too much power. And so he uh, suggested a, a Bill of Rights into the Constitution, which became the first Ten Amendments. Uh -huh. So Thomas Jefferson is definitely a father of our country, as we've looked at in our class prior to distance learning. Um, architect of the author of the Declaration of Independence, um, the, the mastermind behind the uh, first Ten Amendments to the United States Constitution, today known as the Bill of Rights. And, um, and also, he was also uh, the third president elected to the United States. So as the third president, Thomas Jefferson, um, you know, he, he was responding to the American desire for Americans to be allowed to move west. And, um, you know, of course, the French had it, uh, everything west of the Appalachian Mountains. And so in order to move west, he would have to negotiate with the French somehow. So as we learned in the unit introduction, the U.S. government wanted to grow west so the American people could have land to build houses, farms, and products. Um, so in addition to Thomas Jefferson, um, one of the key pieces to moving west was this uh, river called the Mississippi. And as you can see from the map here, the Mississippi cut right through the heart of the part of North America that would eventually become the United States. So the Mississippi cut through the heart of North American continent and Americans moving west want to control of this river for farming and transportation. Okay, so of course, you know, you might ask yourself, what do rivers, what are the economic benefits of a river? Well, the economic benefits um, could be um, all this land around here could be developed for farming because uh, the Mississippi River provided irrigation water for farms. In addition to that, you know, the farms that were producing products could move those products up and down the Mississippi River as a, so the river became a, port, a, a, a source of transportation. Um, and then, of course, at the bottom of the river, we, we'll see in a moment, is the port of New Orleans. And, you know, if you are relying on economic trade to grow the strength of your country, not only do you want to control the river and its irrigation for farms and its transportation for goods and supplies, but also, if you want to trade to other places around the globe, for instance, if you want to put uh, farm products on ships here and, and enable them to trade with the, uh, the, the east coast of the United States, the bottom of the river where ships come and go is really important. In addition, if you want to go across the Atlantic toward Europe, that's also a possibility for trade products that are built along the Mississippi corridor here. So the Mississippi River provided a vast economic resource for the growing United States and, and if Americans wanted to move west the Mississippi River would would benefit them in many many ways so in 1803 the Mississippi River and the land surrounding it belonged to the nation of France however so this area belonged to France um, and it was ruled by a gentleman named Napoleon Bonaparte so moving on um, at the bottom of the Mississippi River was the port of New Orleans and here is a uh, a drawing of the port in uh, the early 1800s um, and to have control of the river was important but also have to control of that where the the river empties into the Gulf of Mexico was really important in order for global trade so Americans also wanted to control the port of New Orleans at the end of the Mississippi River if they controlled the port, they could also control the economic trade in products traveling up and down the river. Really important. So that became a target of Mr. Jefferson's plans to enable Americans to move west. You know, uh, how can we get control of the port of New Orleans? How can we get control of the Mississippi River? Is that a possibility? Enter our friend Napoleon Bonaparte, the Emperor of France in the early 1800s. So like uh, President Jefferson, he was the leader of France. So France, led by this gentleman named Napoleon Bonaparte, wanted to build an empire in North America called Louisiana, centered on the Mississippi River. So Napoleon wanted to keep his land in North America. He wanted the Mississippi River. And he was going to call the French colonial development in the New World, which he want, which would eventually become a French empire, he wanted to call it Louisiana. Um, that would create a huge barrier to Mr. Jefferson's plan to move west and the American people's plan to move west. So um, he had, Thomas Jefferson had to figure out a way to negotiate with, with Napoleon. 
Um, however, here's, here's where things get uh, interesting for the Americans. Napoleon drove France into war in Europe and needed money to fight, which he didn't have. So he got involved in European wars and his North American colonial holdings, which included the Mississippi, became a distraction. And Thomas Jefferson knew this. And so Thomas Jefferson um, sent our next character involved in the story, a gentleman named James Monroe. Uh, he sent James Monroe to France. Thomas Jefferson took advantage of, excuse me, took advantage of Napoleon's need for cash, and sent James Monroe to France with seven and a half million dollars to buy the port of New Orleans. Um, okay, so the Americans were serious about negotiating with France. Napoleon, desperate for money, surprised Monroe by selling not just New Orleans, which is the port at the bottom of the river, but also all of their land surrounding the river, known as Louisiana, for a grand total of $15 million. Hence the, great, hence the term greatest land deal ever. Okay, so if you notice here, the initial price that the Americans were willing to pay was seven and a half. However, they ended up paying 15 for not only the port of New Orleans, but also the, um, all the land surrounding the entire river, the port of New Orleans, and control of the Mississippi River, all for $15 million. Okay, moving on. Now, greatest land deal ever. Okay, here it is. So the original United States, as we already know from class, you know, uh, was pretty much the 13 original colonies that moved up and down the east coast of the United States. Um, and then by 1803, when Mr. Jefferson made his deal with the French, uh, the Americans had moved into uh, what is called the Northwest Territory, which we touched briefly on in class. And the goal was to move you know, west of the Mississippi, control the Mississippi River Valley, and start pushing west across the continent. So the deal that Thomas Jefferson and Napoleon struck called the Louisiana Purchase, it gave the USA all this land, okay, stretching from the port of New Orleans in the south all the way to the Canadian border, from the Mississippi River in the east, all the way to what you can't see on this map, which are the Rocky Mountains in the west nearly doubling the size of the United States with one stroke of a pen and the one writing of a check for $15 million. The Louisiana Territory stretched from the Mississippi River all the way to the Rocky Mountains and, um, and opened up the West for American expansion. So quite, so in one fell swoop, the nation doubled its size. However, there was a problem. You guys remember from the U.S. Constitution that the federal government is broken into three branches. We have the legislative branch, the executive branch, and the judicial branch. And under the rules of, of the Constitution, um, it states that, you know, although the president does have, the executive does have the power to negotiate treaties with foreign powers, he doesn't have the power to spend money without the approval of the legislative branch. So could he potentially um, make a plan to buy the land from France? Um, and does he have power to negotiate with foreign leaders to do that? Absolutely, that's part of his power as the executive. However, does he have the power to pay for any land deal without the approval of Congress? And under the US Constitution, that is not allowed. So, um, excuse me, oops, let's go back. Sorry about that. When the news got to Congress that President Jefferson had purchased Louisiana without their approval, they were angry. Remember, this is only 1803, so this is only about, you know, 25 years after, or uh, 20, really, uh, no, um, about 15 years after the Constitution was written. Hi, I'm back. Sorry for that brief interruption. So, um, where was I? talking about um, the Louisiana Purchase and whether or not Thomas Jefferson was acting within his constitutional limits to buy foreign land. 
Um, when news got back to Congress that President Jefferson had purchased Louisiana without their approval, they were angry. Although Congress felt the president had violated the Constitution, so the nation was only 15 years old or so, he was only the third president. So, so when the president started moving, um, you know, beyond what the Constitution uh, allowed after only 15 years, that worried that worried the, the that worried Congress. Um, uh, however, okay, they did not punish him because they were thrilled with all the new land. So let's go back for a moment and look at that. Uh, do you think Congress is going to tell Thomas Jefferson to return the check when they've doubled the size of America? Um, that would be a real challenge for Congress. And so um, although they were angry, they were also thrilled. Okay, so Congress approved Thomas Jefferson's um, violation of the Constitution and the Louisiana Purchase was completed. And here is, in 1803, here is what the new borders of the USA look like. So over here we have the original uh, states prior to the Louisiana Purchase. Okay, here we have states that we had already claimed control over, or not states, land that we'd already claimed control over up here. Anything called a territory means that it belongs to the United States, but it has not been turned into states yet. Okay, that, uh, and that would have been one of our vocabulary terms if we were still doing the key terms like we did in class prior to our closure. And I will be reintroducing our vocabulary piece to each unit. Um, however, that's not in place. Territory would be one of those words that we would look at one more time. A territory is land that belongs to the United States but has not yet officially been turned into states. So you can see that this land was territories before the Louisiana Purchase. And then with the purchase, we got all this land. Now, however, we know today that the United States reaches all the way to the, the Pacific. Um, and so how did that happen? Well, in our unit on the American West, we will, we will learn how this happened, okay? How did, how did all this Spanish land become part of the United States? Also, uh, Spain also owned Florida. So we cut it, you, you will learn that how we negotiated for Florida. Well, you will learn what happened to Spain's land in the New World and how it became, eventually became part of Mexico and then how we went to war against Mexico. Those are topics that are coming up in the, in the next several weeks. Um, in the attached match, the U.S. is pink, the Louisiana Purchase, now part of the USA, is yellow, and the land still owned by Spain is gray. So our story of the American West will, will also tell this story. Moving on. All right, so our week two activity is titled American West to Louisiana Purchase and includes four parts. So once you're done with the screencast, go ahead and click open your activity. Um, and those four parts in the activity for this week, it'll include um, a text uh, topic text reading that covers the same topic that we covered in the screencast. Uh, it'll have topic based support questions which are which you are able to answer using the actual activity that you click open. And then it will have an independent question which um, expands your learning a bit and might uh, and you can use independent internet research to help you answer this question. And then finally, we also have an enrichment question. okay and this enrichment question, will uh, also will I will encourage internet outside internet research to answer it and this enrichment question will be will be answered in a race style for, per, uh, excuse me a race style format so you'll have to restate the question answer the question find and cite evidence to support your answer and then finally explain and summarize your answer okay in the independent questions you can answer them any way you like the enrichment questions, we're going to use the race format. Okay, so that's our activity for each week, at least for this week. Um, a topic that matches our screencast with a reading, support questions, independent questions, and enrichment questions. Now, how do you do each of these pieces? Instructions for each part are listed, uh, if you can see at the bottom in the blue, instructions for each part are listed on each activity in Schoology. So if you wonder how to answer the text-based uh, questions, go ahead and look at the instructions. How to do the independent or enrichment, go ahead and look at the instructions. All right, you guys, that concludes our week two screencast, looking at uh, our second topic in the American West. Go ahead and make sure you finish that activity. 
and uh, we will be meeting as a Zoom classroom for my eighth graders on Friday from 1 to 2 p.m. And I'm looking forward to seeing everyone. Remember, um, you guys, we really uh, we track attendance by looking at you know the emails we receive during office hours, the Schoology assignments that you submit online, and also um, participation in our Zoom meetings. So we don't want we want at least to hear from everyone at least once a week. Uh, you know, in a perfect world, more than that. Um, but if we have not heard from you and this is your first time clicking in to view this screencast, make sure that you um, let us know you're out there via email um, during office hours or by completing an assignment or by visiting our Zoom classrooms. Okay, that'd be really helpful. So I hope you guys are safe. Hang in there. Uh, we'll keep the ball rolling and um, I look forward to seeing you on Friday and next week we'll introduce our next topic. Okay. Um, I will see you later and stay safe.